name is John Martin, and um, on behalf of the Active Teaching Lab, let's talk about Google Apps and desire to learn. Um, Google Apps has is a huge, by this overwhelming graphic, you can see that it's a huge suite of tools, and desire to learn is a really interesting uh, learning management system as well. But the two have not been playing together super well lately. Um, it's not as intuitive as it should be. But let's look at this and, and ask the question, why are we interested in using Google Apps in Desire to Learn? Well, the first thing is, so many students are familiar with Google already. There are over 100, not 100, I just looked this up today, 1.7 million Google users right now. So everybody, it feels like, knows Google and uses Google. They're familiar with the Google ecosystem. The Google system is, is set up to be very easy and accessible, even at the cost of some um, fancier design pieces. So they're familiar tools and it's easy. Um, if we can keep, if we can use those easy tools to keep students on the learning management system by embedding them, then they don't have to leave the learning management system. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about them getting lost in some ways. So that's good. And it's also for instructors, it's great because you can manage content easier than you can through the D2L um, mechanisms. Now, at UW-Madison, if we go to our little UW tools and we click on Google Apps, at this point, all it, you, all it does is it brings us to our My Drive on Google. That is not a full integration. That's not what D2L wants as a full integration. But that link is not completely finished. Amy? So I've been using Google in teaching for several years, going back to, I think, 2011 was the first time. Um, one of the biggest ways that I use it is for formative feedback, which I talked about a few weeks ago. And part of the reason that I use it for formative feedback is I use the design thinking framework, and then I use backwards design throughout the ID8 aspect of it. Now, in design thinking, the first part that you need to do before you start putting together your learning objectives is to understand your students, where are they coming from. You need to know your audience, uh, what journalists would say, and write for them. As an instructional designer, as an instructor, we write our curriculum for the users, for the learners that we have. So how do we learn about them? Well, it's great if you could ask them ahead of time. But if not, even on the first week of class, if you can ask them, they'll, they'll, they'll learn and you'll be able to make some modifications accordingly. So I use Google Forms for that. And how do, how do they like it? They like it. I get some good information about it. Um, and it's great. You can also use a Google Forms for anonymous post-class feedback. So at the, end of the, at the end of the class, after they go home, you can say, hey, what was the stickiest point about today? What, what was the thing that you had trouble learning? Um, or did you learn the learning objectives that I outlined? And then what I always do is I always explain what are today's learning objectives were, what I wanted to get out of, what I wanted them to get, and then did I do that? So rather than a, did you like the class? Did you dislike the class? I ask, I reframe it differently and say, did we do what we set out to do? And this is what it looks like embedded within Desire to Learn. Um, here at UW Madison. I've used Google Docs for social learning. So I have my students go out and do something embarrassing and share it with each other in class as a way to sort of build up that level of um, we're all in this together and here's evidence that I've actually gone and completed the task. I use it for Google uh, for collaborations. So in this example, as a reading response, instead of just having them respond to me, this is what I thought about the article, I have them take on, in groups of four, four different roles. The protagonist has to always agree with whatever the author's argument was and bring in two extra pieces of information. The media, or the antagonist has to say, the author is wrong. <coughs> And I don't care if I believe that the author is wrong or not. The author is wrong, and here's two more pieces of information um, to, to back that up. The mediator says, why can't we all get along together? <laughs> um, here's some good things about the, what the author said. Here are some 
bad things. Here's a third way that we can make this all work. And then, of course, the troll building on the internet means their jobs would just be a jerk. And so they, <laughs> it's like a day off for that person um, that week. And then each week they, they, they rotate. Oh, the troll, by the way, even though it's sort of a day off and they get a chance to put on this sort of mean mask. Um, and it is a mask, so students feel like, OK, if I were just doing this on my own, I would not say bad things about what Amy had written. But because it's my job now to be a troll, I can do this, and she'll still have a conversation with me the next day. <laughs> That's so cool. And then the next week, we switch roles, and everybody who's a protagonist gets to be the antagonist, and the antagonist gets to be the mediator, and the troll has to be the protagonist. Um, they liked, they thought it was very positive using the Google Doc integration. Um, and again, these are the just reactions that I got at the end of the semester. Um, I use YouTube for community building. And in this one, in this case, at the beginning of the semester, instead of having everybody introduce themselves, I have them create a YouTube video that introduces themselves. So instead of being standing up at the front of the room and saying, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I live in whatever hall, and then they sit down and nobody remembers or notices them. This way you can see them in their rooms. You can see what posters they have on the wall. It becomes a little bit more personal. They get a chance to practice it. Really, it's only like a three-minute assignment, but they will redo the assignments over and over and over again until they get the lighting right, and oh, I messed up that word, so we'll do it over again. So they really think about what it is that they want to share with their, with their classmates. And then again, that group embarrassment of everybody has to do this really pulls them together. Uh, they liked it. I've used Blogger for social learning. And the nice thing about this was they can very quickly scan to see what each other has done. And so and if they clicked on any one of these, it would uh, zoom into a full-size uh, page. Now, there are many different ways of, of, uh, of, of formatting this automatically built into Blogger. Um, and it's kind of a great way for them to do self-checks on their assignments. Am I doing the assignment up to the level of you know, Joe, or, or am I slacking? Does mine look a little bit not as good? This is what it looks like when embedded in D2L, just as an iframe. So it's not as accessible for them to see it. Uh, for them to go to it and, re and read in it. But just being in the learning management system, it's like another, oh yeah, I should go check on that. Or, oh, hey, what's that? And then they click on it and they get out and, and they can get to it. We've used Google Plus community for social learning classes that I've worked with, where building on this idea of a Facebook feed, or the, the feed, people can put, share their own videos, add a description, uh, they can plus one it, they can add comments to it, and that's kind of a neat thing. Now that does not embed in D12 very well, other than that sort of reminder like, hey, we've got this extra thing, do you want to go back and, and see it? And it's sort of another visual reminder to, oh yeah, there's this extra thing. So it's just, it's a link, but it's a prettier looking link. So it can't be like an RSS feed kind of thing? They do not have that RSS feed set up or any way to even, they don't even let you embed the iframe, mm -hmm. oh. which I've been struggling with for a while because I don't know why they didn't let us do that. So those radio buttons you have on there, did you use Google Forms for that? So this is a Google Form over there, yeah. Okay. And that's just another way to use Google Forms for, you know, what do you want for, yeah. you know, sign-up sheets or what do we want to do today? Um, you can use Google Maps and create a Google Map um, widget in D2L to geographically contextualize things. So you could say something like, all right, here's a link to the map. If you click on that, you, it'll, you'll go to that uh, Google My Map. And you can say, indicate where you're from. So you can have them all sort of, oh, we're all in Og Hall, or, or something like that. Or you can say, you know, go locate the different examples of Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture, and let's build a collaborative map that way. <coughs> In many ways, the biggest thing for instructors, though, is that Google Docs makes the course file administration so much easier. And it's because Google has this, ability, this amazing sharing system 
that we can have um, one that's embedded as the instructor. I don't have to go into my Google Apps. I can just go into my course site, and all of the opportunities for me to, to edit are available right now. My TA can go in, and based on their login, they might only be able to suggest things based on the sharing permissions that I give them. The students can come in, and they might only be able to comment on things. So if they have a question about line seven of the assignment, they can highlight that and add a comment. I will automatically get a notification in the email saying, so and so has commented on this. And now I know, not that they're having trouble with the assignment, but that they're having trouble with line seven of the assignment. And I can go in, and I can make edits to that, and I can send something out to the rest of the class if they're having troubles. Now, the problem with that is if you don't set sharing for other people to be able to see it, they won't even be able to see it, and it'll look like this in, in your Google Doc or in your activity uh, in D2L, in your course site. So you have to let them at least, if they have that link, they, they can view it. And you probably don't have to go into that. That's actually probably the big part of, 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 of what I wanted to say in this, this first 10 minutes. Um, but here is the sharing we can go through. And actually, we'll talk about that um, in detail as we go through the sheet. So that's what I've got to say as far as the story aspect of this. Um, and now we can. Reform it. <laughs>